This is Twitter. Welcome everyone to this webinar. It's another This Week in Photo webinar. This one is all about uh, LinkedIn. You know, and LinkedIn specifically for photographers and photographers that want to grow their followings, grow their respect level or increase their respect level. Um, and of course, if you're in business, grow your bottom line. So this guy, Jeff Brown, is an expert at all of that. He's made it, you know, his mission to learn all the little nooks and crannies and the ins and outs of LinkedIn and how you as a photographer, because not only is he a LinkedIn expert, he is a professional and successful professional photographer, I would guess mainly due to, you know, or somewhat due to LinkedIn, but he's, he's one of us, right? He's a photographer and he knows this social media stuff. So he's prepared this amazing presentation that he's going to go through and give you a bunch of notes and tips and all that stuff. You can take notes, but there will be a replay. I'm recording this, as you can see. And you'll get an email after this uh, on where to find the replay. And then lastly, at the end of this, we'll do a Q&A session. So I'm gonna, I've reserved like 10 minutes or so towards the end. So if you have a question, feel free to throw it in that Q&A. Um, I can click on that little hand at the bottom of the Zoom window and there you can throw your questions. I'll let those queue up in there. And then when we get to the Q&A segment, you know, I'll just throw them at Jeff. Unless there's something like completely poignant to what he's talking about, then I'll interrupt him and then you know, we'll do that. And then the other thing is Jeff does have, uh, we collaborated on a LinkedIn photographer's course on This Week in Photo called LinkedIn Domination. You can find that at thisweekinphoto.com. Just click on Twip Shop. And that is, Jeff will tell you about it at the end, but that's several hours of basically what he's teaching here today, in-depth, multiple videos, on-demand, mobile, and all that. And Jeff is uh, gonna share a coupon code at the end to knock 20% 20, 20 off, I think of the yep. uh, of the price so that's it that's all the housekeeping that's all i gotta do jeff brown uh you ready to do this you excited yeah yeah i'll just do my uh screen chat all right the floor is yours sir <clears throat> so can you see that okay yes yep we see your yep. powerpoint let's minimize this Okay, guys, so um, this presentation is a LinkedIn guide for photographers. So this is just going to go over some of the uh, essential bits to know about LinkedIn. If you're not really up on LinkedIn, which I know a lot of photographers aren't, this is, uh, this is going to give you some real in-depth insight into LinkedIn. Now, I work with photographers in over 20 countries worldwide. I work with hundreds of photographers around the world in all different niches from weddings to portraits, um, headshots, food photography, real estate, architectural, and LinkedIn is an absolutely amazing platform. Uh, you don't need a LinkedIn premium account. You don't need to spend money on LinkedIn ads. In fact, I recommend you do not spend money on LinkedIn ads because they're very, very expensive. And all you have to do is engage, post, and connect with people, but follow a, a particular routine that I've put together, and you will start to see amazing results in sometimes as little as just a couple of weeks. So I'm just gonna go through some of the, uh, the real uh, key points about LinkedIn in this presentation. So why can't you ignore the power of LinkedIn? So LinkedIn is the fastest growing professional networking platform on the planet. Uh, it's currently up to about 800 million users uh, with two new accounts created every second. Now, this is the really interesting bit. Less than 30 million of those users have a fully optimized profile. So less than 30 million are really showing up in the searches. Um, and it's quite easy when you know what you're doing to fully optimize your profile, but you don't optimize your profile for LinkedIn. LinkedIn called it, call an optimized profile, basically ticking all the boxes and filling all the stuff out. But your profile needs to be optimized for your ideal clients. So not only is it optimized to show up, it's very attractive and desirable for the people you want to, to book your services. So the average wage earner on LinkedIn takes home around $80,000 a year. So these aren't freebie hunters. These aren't Groupon type people. These are people who have a, a good disposable income. 41% of millionaires use the platform. 89% of B2B marketers use LinkedIn for lead generation. So if you are hitting the commercial sector, 
then LinkedIn is probably going to be your best platform for selling your, you know, commercial food, real estate type of photography. But what you got to remember as well, you know, these, these millionaires, these highway journeys, they also have kids, they have dogs, uh, they get married, they have children who are getting married, and people buy from people who they know, like, and trust. And now this is the really, really interesting part. Only 1% of the users on LinkedIn create the content for the entire news feed. So once you know what you're doing and you're posting the right type of content, it's very, very easy for you to get seen. It's not highly competitive likes of Instagram and Facebook. You can get some amazing organic reach on LinkedIn. And like I said, you don't have to spend a penny. So you gotta make your first impressions count. LinkedIn is a person to person platform where relationships are created and sales are made. In order to build a relationship, you need to be known, first known, then liked, then trusted. Because once people trust you, then you become, um, you know, you become the person that they want to go to 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 do business with, and you also become more appealing when you specialize and target a niche. So I always say, don't be the general photographer or the freelancer or the jack of all trades. If you do wedding photography, but you also do headshots and you do portraiture. Pick a niche and specialize for that particular niche on LinkedIn. So you can do your weddings on Facebook and you can do your headshots and personal branding on LinkedIn. Use a professional headshot. Don't use your logo. See so many photographers using their logo as their sort of LinkedIn profile picture. People buy from people. They don't buy from logos. It's a person-to-person -person networking platform. So you need to look professional and you need to have a really good profile picture there. Be a specialist, so in, appeal to either a sector or a service. So you could be a food and hospitality photographer, or you could be a photographer who offers headshots and personal branding. Don't use the default LinkedIn banner. It's a great bit of real estate, that LinkedIn banner, there where you can show maybe two or three images with your call to action and your personal hashtag. And we'll talk about personal hashtags a little bit. Uh, further on in this presentation and include a strap line that states the benefit that you do so don't just put you know a real estate photographer or headshot photographer put headshot photographer that gets you noticed and creates the per perfect first impression remember people buy benefits they don't buy the images they buy the benefits that those images bring so somebody wanting a headshot doesn't just want a pretty picture of themselves. They want to make more connections. They want to grow their network. They want to create the perfect first impression. So that's what you sell to them. Create influence with your content. Like we said, only 1% of the platform create all the content for the newsfeed. So when it comes to building your influence on LinkedIn, it's fairly easy because content is king. There is, but there is simply no point in building a vast photography network, connecting with, with lots of people if you don't actually have anything to say. So you need to be not only connecting with ideal clients, but you need to be putting content out there so that you're coming up time and time again in the newsfeed. Create a content plan and set monthly goals. LinkedIn classes a content creator as somebody who posts around 16 times or more per month. So it's not as sort of heavy going as, as, as likes of um, Instagram or Facebook where content turnover is a lot quicker. On LinkedIn, you can create a post today and that will still be getting likes, shares and comments in about a week, a week and a half's time. So it's not as hard work. And set goals for connections as well. So try and connect with maybe 30 new people a day. These, these things don't take long. You can really um, be winning on LinkedIn with about 40 minutes a day um, of connecting and posting content. Experiment with different content types. We'll talk about some content types in a bit. Don't post like you do on Instagram. So first of all, with uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn less is more when it comes to hashtags, but when it actually comes to content type, the, the, the physical content, LinkedIn likes you to be using about 13 to 1500 characters. It's a storytelling platform. And remember, you're trying to build relationships. So you, it's not, and remember who you're posting for, you're posting to your clients. So don't post as if you're posting to other photographers. 
and track your views, comments, and weeks on a likely basis. So what you can do is, um, you know, you can see how many views you get in, how many comments you get in, and if something's working, just keep repeating it. Now, people worry about LinkedIn and think, you know, should I be posting uh, personal things on LinkedIn? If I'm a headshot photographer, if I'm a food photographer, you know, wedding photographer, do I, do I put pictures on of uh, like a nice day out for a, for a walk or do I put pictures on of what I've been doing at the weekend? I'd say definitely yes, because people buy from people they like. So it's all about building relationships. So obviously I offer mentoring services. This is just a photograph that's from my, that's actually from my patio looking out across the field right next to my house. And I put a post up saying, is it just a man thing? Because this was, I think this was about October time, the beginning of October. And I was saying in my post that um, I'm determined not to switch the heating on, even though it's getting colder until the 31st of October. So it was just a bit of a, a fun post. And it got a lot of engagement, 128 comments of other people saying, Yes, Jeff, I'm exactly the same. I don't put the heating on until the 31st of October. You can actually see your, um, your reviews from your comments, your statistics as well. So you can see what type of people are engaging and looking at your, your, the posts that you're creating. And this post had 6,061 views. That's a lot of people viewing it. And what you've got to remember is views are really, really important on LinkedIn because a lot of people on LinkedIn don't actually engage much. They read, they consume content, but they don't like and comment. And the reason being a lot of people are a little bit standoffish or a little bit frightened to comment in case they're saying the wrong thing because they think LinkedIn is such a professional platform. You can't have a, a bit of banter. You can't have a bit of joke. You can't, you know, they're, they're, they're terrified in case they put a foot wrong. The amount of people who contact me and say, Jeff, I want to book a call with you. I'm interested in your mentor and services. And then I look at these people's profiles. I've never seen them before in my life. They've never liked anything. They've never commented. And then I jump on a call and they go, I've been watching you for about six months. I love everything you do. Because they've been viewing my content, but they haven't been engaging with it. And I know that a lot of my clients, other photographers who service all different sectors, say exactly the thing, the same thing. The views are high, but the comments might be low. The likes might be low. Don't be disheartened. You never know who's looking in the background. So posts and what works best on LinkedIn. So for the actual news feed, um, you can now post to 3,000 characters on LinkedIn. There are six different posting types of options. Plus, you also have uh, LinkedIn articles, which is more like blog style posts. And the LinkedIn articles are for like much longer form content, you know, like 2,000 word blog posts. But these are really, really good for showing up on Google uh, because LinkedIn articles are very SEO heavy. I encourage you to try all different types of LinkedIn content post into the, the actual news feed, the, the shorter posts, the, uh, the 1,500, 1,000, 700 character posts. And then also maybe create one or two articles per month. So you build up a um, a stock of really good in-depth articles on LinkedIn, which is going to get you found on Google. Um, I still get comments. I still get interaction from stuff that I produced on LinkedIn articles maybe three or four years ago because this because it's so SEO heavy. So you have text-only posts. And surprisingly enough, text-only posts really works well on LinkedIn. Image posts, obviously, that's great for us as photographers. But what I'm going to say is, you know, if you're doing an image post, don't just put the put the image up there with a load of hashtags. It's not like Instagram. Tell a story. And usually what I say is who, what, where, when, why, uh, especially if you're doing a story about a business. You've been working for a business. You've been doing some branding shots for a business. Tell the story from the business's point of view. So I did some shots for, um, I don't know, such and such media company because and then say why they need to the shots. Because when you when you tell a story and people read that, that sends a trigger to them and people think, oh yeah, we could do with getting some of our brand and stuff updated because we feel like we're lagging behind on social media and that our competitors are getting ahead of, ahead of us. So always tell a story, tag in the business and tag in people who are in the photographs. Video posts, we're gonna cover video on, uh, on this slideshow. Document posts, you can upload. Uh, brochures, PDFs, 
and you can also pin them to your featured section, which we'll talk about again later on in this slideshow. LinkedIn polls, I'm going to talk about them because they are so misused, but they are fantastic. And LinkedIn Live. So you can actually go live on LinkedIn. I, I went live twice last week. I usually go live on LinkedIn once a week and have guests on. It's great because, again, hardly anybody uses LinkedIn Live, so you can get a lot of traction on there. So one of the big things is to open your post with a headline. So you saw the last post I did where... Um, you know, you're looking at that view from my patio and it had a headline and it had a few emojis in there. Your LinkedIn post headline could be the difference between your content getting views and potentially going viral or just disappearing in the newsfeed. Create a great headline and draw your readers in, just like a newspaper, you know, create attention. And there's different types of headlines you can write. This is also good for thinking about, your, you know, your, your Facebook, uh, even, uh, even your blog post and your um, email, email marketing. So you've got a mystery headline, create mystery. So a mystery headline is where your headline in, encourages people to click the see more and find out more, because that's what you want to do on LinkedIn. You want people to click the see more and open up the post and read it. And a mystery headline might be something like, um, when I tried this approach on LinkedIn, things really started to work for me. So I haven't told you what I've, I've done, but I've, I've sparked your content. I've sparked your interest. You've got to click on that, see more to find out what I tried to, to see the difference. So th those are really good. That's a mystery headline. Then you've got an ask a question headline. You know, what are your views on? And then when you use an ask a question headline, I always say repeat that question at the end of your post. So use an ask a question headline, put your 12, 1300 characters worth of content in there. And then at the very uh, end, say, so what do you, and then ask that question again, because by doing that, you're encouraging people to leave comments and that really, really works for, for the comments. Make a statement headline. This is being bold and being, you know, making a statement. This is by far the best milkshake I've ever had, you know, and then photograph of a milkshake. So, you know, make a statement. You could be really bold on that. And then a list solution headline. These are really good for blog posts as well. So uh, seven top tips for creating um, the ultimate personal brand online. Add clickbait and always ask for engagement. So a clever way to increase your post openings, which lead to higher viewing counts, is to use what is referred to as clickbait. And that is to encourage the, um, the viewer to click the see more part of your content because this helps with the dwell time factor. So when, when your, um, your post goes onto the newsfeed on LinkedIn um, and you are scrolling through it and you stop, so somebody scrolls through and stops and they're looking at your post, but they haven't clicked to see more. The LinkedIn algorithm has noticed that you've stopped. So it's taking stock of that. When somebody clicks that see more, the dwell time starts counting. So that's why it's good to have slightly longer posts, you know, these 13 to 1500 character posts on LinkedIn, because the more people are engaging, the more people are reading that post, the more they kept on the content. So LinkedIn is going to reward you for keeping people on their platform because they don't want people to leave. So anything that leads to longer dwell time is going to increase your ranking factor, open up your organic reach, so more people are going to see what you're putting out there. So create a really good headline, then leave about three to four lines of text space below so that all you can see is the headline. You can't see the actual text, so people have to click the see more underneath the headline to read it. Add emojis or put like a little arrow below the headline to encourage people to click the see more. Don't be afraid to use emojis on LinkedIn. Tell a story and include a question. So we always said, you know, always, whatever post you're doing, always ask for the, uh, the comment at the end. Repeat your question at the end so you can get that answer. Ask readers to click on and follow your LinkedIn hashtag. And I'll explain what a LinkedIn hashtag is, your personal hashtag at the end. And then use three to five industry relevant hashtags at the end of your post and separate them from your post. So what I normally do is I'll ask my question at the very end. Then I'll say to readers, click on and follow my LinkedIn hashtag 
creating successful photographers for regular photography business tips and advice. So I always tell them why they need to sell it, uh, follow that hashtag. Then I'll uh, line tab down maybe two or three spaces. So I've got a bit of separation. Then I'll stick my hashtags in. So I don't have my hashtags either. I don't have my hashtags inside the content and I don't have it close up against the content. I remove it so it doesn't spoil the readability of what I'm, what I'm putting together. So you see this, this uh, one here, when I woke up, I couldn't stop crying. Cry face, point down, you know, that, that will have the see more bit. And that got, you know, <clears throat> quite a lot of engagement because you have to open that up to find out why I couldn't stop crying. So that is a mystery headline. Great hacks to a winning video on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is by far one of the best ways um, for utilizing video to build relationships because video more than any sort of post is very, very personal. People get to get to see, you, get to feel you, be, be, you know, the real person behind the camera. It's much more personal. So you've got to keep your, one thing, you've got to keep your videos short and engaging. Make them fun because that's the key to people opening them and then watching them. So don't go too serious at all. You know, you can be fun on LinkedIn. I recommend go for under three minutes. Keep it snappy and vary your tone throughout. So you're not monotone up and down. Try and get some, some uh, variation in your pitch. And as you start, start very short. So if you're just going on video for the first time, I recommend doing maybe less than a minute, say 30 to 45 seconds. And then as you start to build credibility, then you can start to increase the length of your video. And the reason being is when people are scrolling through the news feed, if they click on, a, if they see a video and it has a nine minute timeline, and they don't know who you are, they'll be like, oh, that's too long. You know, everybody's really time hungry, aren't they? So if they see a short video that's only 20 seconds and they're like, oh, that looks interesting. You know, I can I can get away with giving you 20 seconds of my time if I don't know you. But if I see something that's nine or 10 minutes, I'm probably not going to invest it. I'll go on to looking at other stuff. The square format uh, works really good because it, it positions itself bigger on the, on the news feed. So if you're recording on a mobile phone, click it onto the square format, you get a bit more real estate in the news feed. Vary your backgrounds or clothing. So if you're in the same, you know, if you're in the, the if you're recording in your office, try and change different backgrounds in your office. Because if you're doing a video on Monday, then you do another one on Thursday and you've got the same color shirt on and you've got the same background. It, because stuff hangs around for quite a while in the LinkedIn newsfeed, people might just scroll past it thinking it's the video they watched a few days ago. So, you know, if you're going to record some in the office, maybe do one in a white shirt and put a different shirt on or move around in your white shirt to a different part of the office and record another, then change shirts. Sometimes I record maybe three or four videos in an afternoon and that will see me for, for the month. You know, I'll, I'll put one video out a week or something like that. Experiment with frames and titles. There's lots of software and apps out there that does automatic subtitling. And they say you get about 80% more engagement and more take up on your videos when they have subtitles. Always use native video, um, never post links. So like most social media platform, LinkedIn hits outbound links. It will reduce um, uh, organic reach on your posts if you have an outbound link. It doesn't want to take people to YouTube. It wants people to stay on LinkedIn. So record it on your mobile phone and upload it direct to the LinkedIn platform. So likewise, if you're doing a post and you want somebody to go to your website uh, and check something out on your website, don't put that link to your website in the actual post. If you want to put the link to your website there, then mention in the, the, the actual post, say, click on uh, my link in the comments section below. So then put your link to your website in the first comment below the post. That will help uh, um, keep your organic reach up. Hey, Jeff, I just want, I wanted to interject there for a second. Yeah. So, so just to be clear, you're saying don't put your URL or any URLs in the description, always put them in the comment area of the, or the yes. first comment. Definitely, because LinkedIn doesn't want, I, I've tried this, I've experimented with this um, quite a bit, and, and the, 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 it just completely dives. As soon as you put an outbound link, the only outbound link you can put is if you have a LinkedIn company page, um, and then you, you, you're doing a, a, a post of, 
on your own personal profile, but then you put a link to your LinkedIn company page, that's keeping it inside LinkedIn. So LinkedIn's fine with that. As soon as right. it goes outside their platform, they're not going to share that. I've I've done that before and, and put a post out, you know, with an outbound link, and it's got maybe three or four likes, a hundred views, and I, I can normally get, you know, six thousand to ten thousand views uh plus. And as soon as I put that outbound link in, LinkedIn's like, nah, we're not we're, we're not gonna have somebody going to a website or going to YouTube or, or even worse, Facebook. You know, we don't want people going to our competitors. So never, never use that. And if you're gonna use an outbound link, like tell people. Um, you know, click on and see the link in the uh, in the comments below. Upload the link. Say this is the link to my website. And then what you can also do is upload a picture as well. And when you upload a picture into the comments with that link, then it stands out more. It's more visible. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Thank you. <clears throat> and video gets uh, video actually gets the least views. So when you when you're looking at your views, you'll see that your videos are your video views are smaller in comparison to text posts or um, imagery posts. However, video builds the best engagement. It builds the best relationships. So I would experiment with doing video. Maybe you know. Once or twice a month, if, if you can. If, I know a lot of people. A lot of people inside my my private group for the uh, the start of this year, we had a sort of a, um, an accountability call last month, and there was about eight members of my group. Says, right, I'm going. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Jeff. Hold me accountable. I'm going to get um, uh, a video out on LinkedIn because people are terrified to do video on LinkedIn with it being a professional platform. But you know what? You can be fun. I mean, if you look at some of my, the posts that I do, I. Uh, for October, myself and my daughter, who's 14, got dressed up as Slash and Axel from Guns N' Roses. I had the wig on, the top hat. She had a guitar and everything. It was, it was cool. And that I got to see that. <laughs> it got a huge amount of engagement, absolutely huge amount of engagement because we're all human. It doesn't matter if you're the, 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 the chief exec of a big company, you still like humor. And, you know, sometimes these sort of posts break up the news feed a bit on LinkedIn anyway, because sometimes the LinkedIn news feed can be very, very business oriented. So if somebody sees something quite fun and quite enjoyable, then they're going to engage with it. Yeah. Now, last year, LinkedIn uh, brought on LinkedIn polls and LinkedIn polls are fantastic for market research. Since LinkedIn launched their polls feature, it has become very popular, but unfortunately, most polls are wasted. You, if you use your polls wisely, you can extract marketing information and feedback from potential clients. You see a lot of people putting polls out there, which are just completely irrelevant. You know, what do you like for breakfast? What do you prefer to your coffee? Unless you're in a coffee shop, that poll is going to be irrelevant to you, um, to your business. So what you want to do is utilize polls that um, ask your followers, what is their most important buying feature? So if you're a wedding photographer, you could say, um, you can have a poll, you know, when you're looking for a wedding album, what is the most important thing? And you could have maybe four, you know, it's got to be leather bound. It's got to have uh, laminated pages and be spill resistant or something. So you can gain a bit of an idea from your followers, what they like, what products they like, or what is the most important thing to them. Uh, ask what they'd like to see in future developments. So what service would they like you to be offering? Research how potential clients prefer to use your photography. So if you're a personal branding photographer, you could say like, you know, where do you, where do you use most of your images to get engagement? Is it LinkedIn? Is it Facebook? Is it TikTok or Instagram or, you know, on, on your website? Also find out their fears. So you can say, if you thought about um, hiring a photographer for a headshot or a personal branding shoot, what puts you off? And then you could have, you know, uh, hate getting my photograph taken, um, never have time to get to the studio. So you could have, you know, maybe four or five answers there. And then you can gather statistics on um, and to see how often people use the services. So how often do you get your headshot updated or how often do you have a family portrait session? Now, here's one that I did. Um, I'm a brand ambassador for the virtual shoot app called Shutter App shutter studio and we were beta testing a new service on on um shutter app and i said uh, can you help me are you interested in beta testing software that connects you with relevant uh, with clients needing virtual shoots so straight away <clears throat> you can see that 
59% of people who voted on there, and there was 103 votes, said, yes, I'm up for it. So the good thing about this is just you, as the poll creator, get to see the stats at the end. So you get to see who's voted for what. So 59% said yes. Um, 23% said they were interested, but they've not actually done a virtual shoot yet. Uh, 11% not offering virtual shoots and maybe cancel them out. And then 7%, what is a virtual shoot? So that gives me a, so there's three uh, possibilities there where I can connect with these people and say, hey, you, you, you know, you, you, you voted on my poll. Uh, I hear you up for, for beta testing the software. Um, come have your email address, we'll send you some stuff out. Or uh, you voted on my poll, um, you said, what's a virtual shoot? I've got a brochure here, it explains a bit more. And then obviously this is what you get at the end. So you can see how people have voted, you know, 61 people said, yes, I'm up for beta testing and it's got all their details on here. And then a little, I can send them a message. So I can message them per personally in reference to that. So this is really, really powerful, but most people don't use this correctly. Hashtags. Now hashtags on LinkedIn, I see so many photographers making mistakes with hashtags on LinkedIn. Like I said, it is not like Instagram. Uh, less is definitely more when it comes to using hashtags on the platform. Use a three to five industry relevant hashtags for each post. Now, industry relevant, this is really, really crucial because you'll see photographers doing, uh, say for instance, you're a portrait photographer or you're a headshot photographer. Uh, say for instance, you're a portrait photographer because I've been doing quite a lot of focus on the commercial side of things, so your portrait photographer. If you start using hashtags like um, portrait photography, um, uh, portraiture, uh, photography, photography New York, New York photographer, that sort of stuff, you're probably not gonna get in front of your ideal client. What you're gonna get in front of is other photographers. When you set up your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn will ask you if there's any particular hashtags you'd like to follow. So people follow hashtags that are either relevant to their niche and industry, or they follow hashtags that are relevant to things that they like. So I might be following hashtags such as photography, marketing, LinkedIn, but I might also be following hashtags because I love to, I love to cook. I might be following cookery hashtags. I might be following mountains because I love to mountain climb. So think about it. If you're, if you've got a family, if you're a really dedicated family person, you might be, you might be following hashtags like family, like um, togetherness, happiness, love, um, those sort of things. If you're a business person, you're not going to be following hashtags like photography, headshot photography, photography, um, Las Vegas, stuff like that, you're going to be following hashtags like entrepreneurship, um, marketing, success, business, um, inspiration. So think about your ideal clients. What are they going to be setting up when they set up their newsfeed? What are they going to be tailoring their content to? Because you want to get your content in front of them. Develop your own personal hashtags. Your own personal hashtag on LinkedIn allows you to get a following of people who say, yes, I want to follow, I want to follow your hashtag. So every time you create something with that hashtag in, you will end up showing up in their newsfeed. Do your hashtag research before using them. So another thing I see is a lot of photographers uh, posting hashtags and the hashtags that are really weak, so the hashtags that might only have a thousand followers or 10,000, 5,000 followers, you know, really, really small. Uh, now, if it's got a thousand followers, remember that's globally. That's not just in your city or in your location. It's like out of the, the you know, across the world out of those 800 million users. Likewise, you don't want to be going for hashtags that has 100 million followers or 50 million followers because the competition is so high. However, there is one exception to this. On a weekend, uh, posting on LinkedIn drops probably by about 80%. So there's not many people posting. There's not much new, fresh content going out there on a weekend. However, views can be very high on a weekend because there's not much content out there. The content that is there is getting viewed a lot more because people still check into to LinkedIn. It's become a bit like Facebook. You know, they're not just checking in uh, Monday to Friday. So if you use a very broad hashtag with a huge following like marketing or personal branding, these are like million 10 million, 50 million follower hashtags on a weekend, on a Saturday or Sunday, 
I can see your content starting to trend under that hashtag. And by the time it's trended, it will carry on through Monday, Tuesday, the following week. So keep those big hashtags um, for the for the, the weekend post. And have a selection of all four types of hashtags. So there's different types of hashtag that you can use. There's emotional hashtags, geographical hashtags like photography, New York, business, Las Vegas. That's a geographical hashtag. Geographical hashtags, you can go for smaller because that means it's potentially just going to be focusing on, on your your county or your state or your, your town. So you can accept smaller followings for that because it means it's more condensed into your region. So this is my own personal hashtag. So you'll see my own personal hashtag there uh, has 445 followers, which isn't bad. Um, so that's 445 people who said to LinkedIn, when Jeff makes a post, can I can I have preference over seeing Jeff's post or the other stuff in the newsfeed? The other good thing as well, if you head over to that hashtag, if you type in creating successful photographers and you click on it and follow that hashtag, you will see every single bit of content I've created over the past however long I've had that hashtag, probably about 18 months. So it's a big, huge stream of all my content. So when I do a LinkedIn Live, I can say, if you've missed the live, then don't worry, go to my hashtag, creating successful photographers, and you can watch the rerun there. So it saves people scrolling through the news feeds. And this is how, um, <clears throat> this is how I set up my call to action. So, you know, I've got like, join me uh, for my LinkedIn live, blah, blah, blah. And then I put a little emoji here, click on. Now, I used to put follow my hashtag, creating successful photographers uh, for regular tips and advice. And I wasn't getting much take up on it. Then I put in front of it, click on and follow my hashtag, create, creating successful photographers for regular tips and advice. It skyrocketed up. I started to get a lot more people come in and follow my hashtag. And I think that's because people didn't realize that you have to actually click on it to take you to the hashtag page to follow it. So utilize that the end of your post, but click on and follow my hashtag and then tell them why, uh, you know, for regular branding top tips or for beautiful pet portraiture to liven up your news feed. Now, LinkedIn, last year, LinkedIn created a creator mode. And in this um, course that uh, myself and Frederick have developed, we, we've done a, uh, a whole section on creator mode and, and why creator mode is so important. Creator mode is basically to help you get more eyes on your content. Once, start, once you've started your content plan, then it's time to switch on LinkedIn creator mode. Creator mode helps you both increase your content reach and also grow your, uh, your visibility, grow your followers. And there are five changes that Creator Mode has made to link, uh, makes to your LinkedIn platform, your profile, when you switch it on. So by default, Creator Mode will be switched off. Now, one of these uh, things is it changes your, um, your default from connect to follow. So people actually follow you instead of connect with you. And why do they do this? Because you tend to find them when, with, when, with that follow button, a lot more people will click on it than connect because connection is a little bit more connected. It's a little bit more of a, an effort. You know, people, uh, people when people are connected with you, they can message you backwards and forwards. When you're following you, they're just saying, oh, I want, I want to see your content in the news feed. So people find it easier to, get, uh, easier to follow. And when you switch creator mode on, when you do a post, if somebody isn't following you, in the top right corner of that post, you will see a follow button. So that increases your followers. The next thing is your follower count is displayed. Oh, sorry. Is your follower count is displayed. Now, when you've got decent sized following, I know Karen's now got something like nearly 9,000 followers, that carries a lot of weight and a lot of authority. I mean, I've got nearly 31,000 followers on LinkedIn. So when people come to my profile and they see such a large following, instantly I get that credibility and authority because I've built up a huge network. Um, so that always goes ahead of you. You know, your follower account goes ahead of it. That really works. The next thing is your talks about hashtags. So your talks about hashtags are basically saying to people who come to, the, come to your profile, this is what Karen talks about. So Karen is talking about headshots. She's talking about marketing, content creation, personal branding, corporate branding. We noticed something there. Karen hasn't put photography, even though she's a photographer, because 
She wants to get in the news feeds of business people, entrepreneurs, CEOs, professionals. So she's using stuff. She's using talks about hashtags that's relevant to what their businesses are looking for. So by default, you change from connect to follow. Your follow account is displayed in your header, which adds to your authority. You'll need to set your LinkedIn talks about hashtags. Again, make sure they're customer facing hashtags. You don't want to be attracting other photographers. You can also create a 30 second cover story video on LinkedIn. Um, when you switch on creator mode, and that's just, you'll see the little Harry Potter effect when we go over and look at my profile in a second. And your featured section moves up to below your header. And this is a great thing because with your featured section, you can start to put things in there. So this is my feature section. Actually, it looks slightly different because I've just uploaded a new brochure, my 2022 program. So on my featured section, I have a click here to book your free mark. Right, so obviously, if you've got any more questions about creator mode, we're going to do, I'm going to show you a few examples um, at the very end of this um, with some of the, the clients that I, I work with. So yeah, so creator mode, by default, it changes your connect to follow. So that helps you really in, uh, increase and grow your followers. It displays your follow account in your header bar. So it really adds authority, especially as you start to grow a bigger following. You'll need to update your creator talks about hashtags and you've got to make those industry related. So those hashtags are relevant to the people that you are following or you want to be following your content. So you don't want photographers to be following your content. You want business people see or, or potential clients. So make sure those talks about hashtags are relevant to what they follow. You can create a 30 second video clip um, and this is called a cover story video. And we'll see this when we go over to my profile. Now this 30 second video clip is great. You can say who you are, what you do. So I could say like, hi, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm a photographer's mentor, but this is the most important bit. What you're gonna do is you're gonna see what you do for the client. And this is the really important bit because people buy benefits. So it's like, hi, I'm Jeff, I'm a photographer's mentor. I help photographers build a premium brand and make a lot more money. If you're interested in having a free 30 minute um, business branding and business strategy call, then head over to my featured section and click on the calendar diary link. So that's how you would create it. So who you are, what you do, more importantly, what you do for the client, and then a call to action at the end. You can easily get that into a 20 second, 30 second video for your cover story. And then your featured section moves to below your header. So your featured section is brilliant. This is my featured section. And with your featured section, you can upload lots of media. So you can have, uh, you can have posts, you can have video, you can have um, PDF documents, and you can also have outbound links. So this is a good way of getting around LinkedIn's way of penalizing you if you put out an outbound link. So say, for instance, I do a post and I'm talking about how to engage, uh, increase your engagement on LinkedIn, or I'm talking about how to price your photography or um, get more uh, followers to your photography blog. I can create that post, write the post, give me some great tips and advice to my followers. And then I can say, if you're interested in taking your photography business to the next level and you would like a free 30 minute uh, marketing advice call with me, simply head over to my featured section and click on the first um, first part of the featured section to access my online diary. So people will come over here, click on this, and that's it, they access my online diary. Um, I've also uploaded my brochure here, so I can say if you're interested in, um, you know, uh, if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about what I do, why not head over to my featured section and download my 2022 brochures. So I've got put my entire 15 page brochure up there. So that's it for the presentation. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I'm gonna quickly head over to LinkedIn. I'll probably have to re-load all these. So this is one of my clients, Emma Dunham. So if you see, remember I was talking about at the very beginning how it's good to target a particular niche. So you see that Emma, Believe it or not, Emma only had 75 LinkedIn followers this time last year. She did a post and she'd said how much LinkedIn had really changed our business and changed our life since we started working together. So she's now close to 5,000. 
uh, she was trying to hit 5,000 for our, our year anniversary. But straight away, you can see what Emma does and importantly, what she does for the client. So she is a personal brand food photographer. She helps food producers, food growers and the hospitality trade ele uh, elevate their brand, attract new clients with storytelling images that showcases the passion and quality of their food. Follow my hashtag for regular tips, the foodies photographer. And then Emma talks about baking, cookery, photography, food and drink and the food industry. So those are hashtags that are relevant to her industry. Now here's Karen, we, see, we saw Karen before. Um, so Karen is absolutely smashing it on LinkedIn. She is probably one of the most predominant uh, headshot photographers, I would say on LinkedIn, especially in her area. She's now the most premium priced uh, headshot photographer in the whole of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. She's coming up close to 10,000. That's her target to, to get to about 12,000 this year. And so what does Karen do? Well, she doesn't just do headshot and branding photography. Uh, Karen creates outstanding headshots that are guaranteed to get you noticed. Her hashtag is stop the scroll, which is quite a cool thing to do because that's what she, she does. She stops the scroll. Uh, click on and follow my hashtag for more personal branding tips and advice. Uh, you can also set up this little voice clip on LinkedIn. I don't know if you can hear this. And this uh, this allows you to tell people. We can't hear, we can't hear that. You can't hear you can't hear that. Did you say no, no, no? So basically, it, it gives you ten seconds to say who you are and and what you do for the client. Now, uh, this lady is Ella. So Ella is a, a branding photographer, and uh, we've been working with Ella about six months now. And Ella is targeting real high earners, and obviously, there's a lot of real high earners on LinkedIn. And she creates branding imagery that um, encapsulates everything that you know the, the person is about. It tells their own personal story. So Ella is using her LinkedIn profile to connect with you know big CEOs of companies, people who don't mind spending three, four thousand pounds on a personal branding shoot because to them it's all about telling their own story. It's not about the cost. So she's really connecting with some some quality clients and getting some amazing work from LinkedIn just by building these relationships. And then uh, finally is me. Now, if you watch over here, say it had that little Harry Potter effect. So when you click on that, that is my, my it says who, who I am and what I actually do. Um, this is what I was saying about your, your banner, you know, so make sure you create an attention grabbing banner that, um, has your, um, your USP on. It's also got my um, my hashtag on here. And then if I scroll down, I don't know why this is still there, that's it. So that's my banner bit. And if you scroll down, obviously you don't, you don't see these analytics. Um, as a profile visitor, the next thing you would see would be my featured section. So my featured section here, like what I said, you know, if I click on this, Here's my PDF brochure and it's a you know, 15 page brochure of all my services. So I can direct people straight to my, my PDF. This here takes people to my, uh, to my online diary. So again, I haven't had to put any outbound links. People can book me direct just from my LinkedIn profile. So the, um, the featured section is a great way to, uh, to sort of, get people to to interact with you or you know quite often i might come down on the morning open up my linkedin and i've got two or three appointments being booked i've got a couple of emails being booked that has come through my online diary and then when i've jumped on a call to people i found out oh yeah i just clicked on your feature section jeff i followed what you said in the post so it's a great way of uh, of building up your your connections and, your, and also building up some uh you know potential clients and as you see, you know, I've got quite a few followers. And, and these were all, you know, I, what, four or five years ago, I had, you know, about 500 followers or something like that on LinkedIn. It's just with creating content and connecting on a regular basis that's got me this high number. And the other reason I've, you know, managed to get such a big number is because, remember what I said, only 1% of that 800 million people are creating content. So that's why I recommend you should be utilizing LinkedIn because you want to get in here before other photographers do you know it's linkedin is 
growing at a phenomenal rate, two new accounts every second. So you want to get in there before the competition does. And I'll just do a stop share there. And that'll bring Excellent. us back to... Excellent. That was great. That was really good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions and there's some questions in the Q&A that we'll get to as well. One, one question that I know I think a lot of people have, Jeff, is, you know, there's a there's a there's only a finite number of minutes or hours in the day. Right. We've got yeah. LinkedIn. There's all the things that you showed here. They take time to do and commitment yeah. and perseverance. Right. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, we've got the other guys out there, the Facebooks, the Twitters you know, Twitter spaces and Clubhouse yeah. and Instagram and TikTok in all of these different services. How do you approach that? Like as a, from a, from a photographer standpoint, you know, and more specifically a, a business persons who's, who mm -hmm. happens to make a business out of photography, how do you manage all of those disparate networks? Well, what I do is I, um, and I know we're going to talk about this um, and, and potentially be doing another another live together on goal setting and and uh, accountability and consistency. Yeah. And at the beginning, at the end of last year, I wrote a book called The Ambitious Photographer's Journal, which is a, a motivation and success journal. And I talked about how it's really important to focus on stuff that's going to make big changes to your business. Um, because with photographers, we do get a little bit carried away with editing and, and doing stuff, working in the business instead of working on the business to, yeah. to make changes. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of my clients, uh, Karen, Karen, who we just seen there, Karen set a goal to increase her LinkedIn following and to post every single day, Monday to Friday for, for 18 months. And then a secondary goal, Above everything else, our secondary goal was to get 100 five-star reviews on Google. So the, the 100 five-star reviews was quite easy for her to do because when everybody when, when somebody came into a, a studio, she, you know, she asked them and she would look them. She said she looks them in the face and say, have you had a fantastic time? Do you love your head? Do you love your headshots? I go, yeah. Would you? And she asked them, say, would you leave me a five-star review? Looks them in the face, says, and you say, everybody, oh yeah, of course I would, of course I would. So then she follows them up with a link when she delivers the images. And because she's asked them face to face and looked in the eye, they've got that commitment. So now Karen has 158 five star reviews on Google, on Google My Business. So what has that one single job done? That one single job, getting 158 five star reviews, has helped her elevate her brand. So she's now the, the premium top priced headshot photographer in the whole of her county. She's increased her prices four times. Wow. in the past in the past year and actually the more she increases her prices the less price friction she gets because she's built this premium brand and she's a premium she's appealing to people who want a premium service yeah. and obviously her premium service is backed up by this 158 five star reviews by getting those five star reviews that has now got her to the top spot for the local maps and also google search for headshot photographer in her in her local area those five-star reviews, she puts that on her website, she puts that on her LinkedIn profile, so that backs up her authority on LinkedIn. And because she's committed to post um, five times a week and connect five times a week on LinkedIn, she has gone from 1,500 followers 18 months ago to nearly 9,000. Karen crazy. gets about four to five organic um, messages on LinkedIn each week saying, can you give me a price for a headshot? Can I book in for a headshot? And she she's not spending any money on, on ads. So if she's charging $300 for a headshot session and then she's people are buying four or five images, which is making you know every headshot session six, seven hundred dollars, and she's getting four or five inquiries organically, isn't that worth spending that 30, 40 minutes a day on LinkedIn doing yeah, that? I'd say stuff? So. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what, what I always do is think about what's going to bring the most amount of benefit to your business. So if you say, right, well, I want to get, I want to get my website up there. Uh, I want to get more traction on my website. I'm struggling. Right. Well, I'm going to start writing blog content. Well, if I write a blog content and I do 10 top tips to do this, or, you know, I structure my blog so that once I've written my blog, I can then break that blog down into tip one that will go on Tuesday, tip two that will go on on Thursday, and then the following week, you know, so if you have like 
nine top tips or eight top top tips in that blog that you've written, which is bringing SEO to your website, those eight top tips will then cover a whole month of posting twice a week on LinkedIn by breaking those down. So you, you then post them onto LinkedIn. Then you, then you shrink those posts down a little bit and then put them onto Instagram, or put them onto Facebook, you know? So what you don't want to be doing is constantly, oh, I've got to, you know, it's totally okay to, to reutilize content. Now, the other thing, the other really, really important thing is your organic reach is probably going to be somewhere in the region of maybe two and 10%. So I've got 31,000 followers. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, you could have anything between 300 and 3000 people getting an organic reach of my, my post. So that's another 20, 27,000 people who have not seen that post that I've created. Yeah. So if I create a post today about how to get more, how to, how to um, increase your photography pricing and build a premium brand, it's totally okay for me to re rehash that post and use it again in a month's time because there's 27,000 people who never saw it in the first place. And the other thing is, in a month's time, I'm probably going to have another thousand followers who never saw any of my posts anyway. Right. So, yeah, it'll be you know, fresh. So it's, what a lot of my clients do is they'll write a post and they'll save it to a Word document. So they, they write the post in February and they might create a, a Word document called, I don't know, um, April Post. And then by the end of February, they've got all of April's content ready to reutilize again. It's, that is totally fine. Because totally the fine, algorithm, no one's seen it, right? It's, yeah, it's because, fresh. You know, yeah. yeah, it's the same as Facebook. You know, Facebook's, I mean, Facebook organic reach on a, a business page is like half a percent or something. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Unless you start yeah. boosting content. So the, the same applies to Facebook. You know, there, there, there are several services out there that, you know, speaking of managing multiple social networks and still managing to have a life, right? Uh, yeah. But there, there are services out there that attempt to solve that issue by allowing you to pre-program posts and, and you can authenticate these services against different, you know, all of your social networks and then program posts to go out over time automatically, regardless of what you're doing. How do you, you know, a, a professional, let's call you a professional LinkedIn person. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing to do that, to automate it? Or should you just be doing everything manual so that, you know, you're, you, you have your finger I, on I the post? I personally do all my LinkedIn stuff manually. Um, mm -hmm. And I only I only post about four times a week. Uh, I don't think, yeah, I've done three posts this week. I've done two lives and one post. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll probably do another one today. So as I say, it doesn't take, I mean, sometimes I don't post to LinkedIn because I'm still getting so much engagement off my previous posts. Um, and one of the best ways to get more engagement on a post is to comment on people's comments. So if you go, oh, hey, Jeff, that's absolutely amazing. I love that. I love why you've um, highlighted about, you know, um, creating my photography brand. And then I could, if I comment back and say, thanks, Frederick, what did, what did you like in particular? And then you comment again. What I'm doing is I'm teasing you to get more comments because yeah. LinkedIn platform, LinkedIn algorithm doesn't work on likes. It works on comments because comments are the best form of engagement linkedin wants more people engaging because that keeps them on the on the platform longer likes are, uh, are just vanity really likes don't really and likes don't build interaction and build relationships and i always say like your know, people if if somebody comments and you get into a comments thing going with somebody you remember that person you don't remember somebody who just clicks a like you know That's right. That's right. um so some of my some of my best clients have come over from just that comment section. You know, they've been commenting, commenting, and then a couple of days later, message pops in, hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Um, and I'm like, oh, there's a guy who commented on my post the other day. And then, look, I'll, I'd love to book a call with you. I'd love to find out a bit more about what you do, how you can help my business. Yes. So that is, and Ella, the girl who we saw, that is Ella's approach. So Ella looks for her perfect ideal clients. These are, she's just done an amazing job for her a woman who's um, really high up in Bosch, you know, Bosch power tools, mm -hmm. really high up in Bosch and just an amazing shoot for her, really expensive personal branding shoot. She got that woman by commenting on this woman's post. Yeah. So she's looking for people who are very similar to her. So she's, she's trying to go for other females and women who are um, supporting sort of like sustainability and 
you know, the future of the planet, because that's something she's passionate on. So when she's looking at these CEOs and people who have these similar ideals and likes to her, it's easy for her to engage on those comments because she's got, she's very passionate. So when she's, when she's engaged and she's passionate and this other woman's like, Oh, I respect her comments. So she's building a relationship and she actually, she, she showed me a screen grab she sent me and she was like, Oh my God, Jeff, look, and she was so excited. She went, look at this. And this woman had been commenting and Ella had been coming back and the last about five or six comments had gone there. And the last comment was, I want a photo shoot with you. Drop me a message. <laughs> sold, just, right? Sold. Yeah, sold, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, let's let's do these. Uh, let's go through the cute the questions that have come in, and then um, then we'll talk about that other project that we're yep. we're cooking up the other webinar, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about our little course a little bit, and then we're out of here. Um, so thank you, folks, for bearing with us. We're a little bit over. We'll go for another five minutes or so, and then we'll we'll go ahead and end this five or ten minutes. Um, so the first question is from Dan Donovan. Uh, Dan has a couple of questions in here. Uh, Dan says, is there a place for us to have a portfolio on our profile page? So on your profile page, your featured section, you can build up some of it. So you can create your um, uh, posts with some of your best, uh, your best images on there and then tell a story about those images. So remember, what you've got to remember is with, with images is your clients look at images different than I'll look at them or Frederick will look at them or other photographers will look at them because your client or potential clients aren't photographers. Yep. So when they look at an image, they go, oh, that's nice. And they look at another photographer's image and go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> you know. Um, yep. But when they see a story and a story that sells the end solution, tells the client's journey and what the other person, that that's like resonates them with them more. So what I would say is get some of your best images up there and create a post of them, one image at a time, create a post, tell a story, and then pin those posts to your featured section, that that bit that we've just seen there. Uh, and that is like a little bit of a portfolio. When you come down to your experience section, uh, which is a little bit further down in your profile, you can upload the images to your experience section. I would say upload five images per each uh, experience section that you have and obviously we cover this in depth when we did the the course together perfect i'm taking notes as you're talking uh next question up is from dan donovan he's again he says um how do you find oh, oh is how do you find how many people are following a hashtag oh good question how do you so yeah, how do you, is there a yeah, way to see so, the number yeah yeah uh, let's have a look am i still on screen share Right, so here we are. Um, can you see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So if I go into LinkedIn and I'm going to type in, so there we are. So say I was going to type in photography, right? LinkedIn will start to prompt me with a few, a few suggestions as soon as you start typing. So if I wanted to see how many people were following photography, what you do is you go down to whatever LinkedIn is suggested and you click on that. And that will then take you to that hashtag's own page. And we can see that photography ah. has 78,000 followers. So that's quite a good one, you know? So if you go hashtag, um, we'll do another photography one. Uh, photo, photo shoot. Um, we click on that. Now that's, that isn't a very good hashtag because that's only yeah. got 898 followers and that's the entire, entire the whole world. So now, You've got different types of hashtags. So you've got what, what I call broad hashtags and then niche hashtags. So broad hashtag is something like, let's say marketing. Now marketing is the broad hashtag, but then a niche hashtag is usually your broad hashtag with either something before it or something afterwards. So marketing is the broad hashtag and then digital marketing is a niche version of marketing or, um, social media marketing or marketing campaign or marketing content. There's a, so normally when you've got, when you've got multiple uh, words, either before or after the main word, it means that that following is going to be a little bit more niche down, uh, a little mo more direct to the type of people you want to get in front of. So if you want to get in front of social media marketers, then social media marketing is going to be a, a hashtag than marketing. And you usually find these broad hashtags have huge followings. So if we go over to marketing, marketing has got 28 million. Um, so that's a lot. So that, that is a hashtag wow. that you're just going to use on a weekend. You don't want to be, because there's just going to be too much. The, the newsfeed is going to be bombarded in that stream of hashtags. 
you're not going to get any uh, any traction on that. You want to peek up. You want to peek into that one when, when the uh, when the crowds have passed by, right? Which is weekends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yep. Saturdays and Sunday, of course. Yeah. Okay, here's another question from Dan. Dan says, at what point in our LinkedIn journey should we switch to creator mode? Um, I would recommend switching to creator mode when you have a fully optimized profile, but not just optimized as in all-star for LinkedIn, because LinkedIn LinkedIn will give you an all-star rating if you go down and you tick all the boxes on LinkedIn, if you fill everything out, if you create this headline, if you put your stuff in your featured section, if you do your, fe your experience section. But that doesn't mean that your profile is actually any good. It just means you've ticked all the boxes. So what right. we, we covered in the course and what we discussed in the course is how to create a customer-facing profile. Because you can have an all-star profile, but it's, it can still be crap. It can still be uninteresting for your client. So you want what you want is an all-star profile that is optimized to your ideal client. So it sells the benefits and it, it creates the desire and then gives them a call to action to get in contact with you. So when you've got your, your fully optimized client-facing um, profile and you've got a few posts under your belt, then flick on your, your create mode. Love it. All right. Uh, two more questions. Uh, this next one is from Gregory Young. Uh, Gregory says, Jeff, would you encourage personal friends to follow your page or would you only, uh, or would you only advise business contacts? No, get, get friends to follow you too, because, you know, if friends are going to, if friends are going to engage in your content, LinkedIn works on something called velocity. So when, when your post first goes out, it's, uh, and that's one of the good reasons to have a, a personal hashtag, because if people, you know, there's 445 people following my personal hashtag. So when I create a post, depending on the time zones, um, if I post that, then 445 people are potentially going to see that in their newsfeed quicker than other people. So that means people are getting onto my content as it is created. LinkedIn works on what's called velocity. So when you create a post, um, as you type the post up and press post, the LinkedIn bot has read your post and already assessed a, a score on that post on how well it thinks it's going to do. So it'll say, uh, Frederick hasn't done a very good job today. We don't like his content. We're only going to give him half a percent because we think this is crap right so that goes out then a few of your friends jump on a few of your network and people from twip jump on and start commenting going hey frederick that's great and <laughs> the bot comes back in two hours so the bot comes back between 90 minutes and two hours from that initial um content creation to read what is called the human engagement element so the bot is just like checking to see if it was right in the first place so yeah. it comes back around and it sees your post with 50 comments on it goes oh my god i was completely wrong about it. frederick's really talented and amazing look at this post right <laughs> i'm now going to open Told that up that to 10 <laughs> i'm now going to open this up to 10 percent of frederick's network that's so awesome. that's why if you've got a few friends a few mates who are commenting on your post in that first crucial two hours they're going to help you get bigger organic reach when the boss comes back around and assesses it if you've got some comments on there. So yeah, definitely. Even, even a few other photographers, you know? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Excellent. Uh, okay. Final question is from anonymous. Anonymous says, do I need to create a LinkedIn business page to use creator mode and is follow up? Should photographers use a LinkedIn business page or their individual profile or individual page? <laughs> And that's, so I think I that's a common question, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend having a business page to add authority to your profile and maybe post to your business page uh, once or twice a week. You don't have to post a lot on your business page. And again, this is something we cover in the, in the course business pages, but your major engagement, your major posting, your major focus is through your personal profile. So I am Jeff Brown, the photographer's mentor, but I have a business page for Focus on Marketing, which is my business. And I've got, I've got about six or seven business pages because I've got quite a few ambassadorships and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what I do is I post on my business pages maybe once a week. I just copy and paste something from my personal profile onto my business page. Um, so I don't write posts just from my business page because people buy from people who they know, like, and trust. So LinkedIn is a is an engagement building platform and it gives um it gives more prominence to posts from your personal profile than your, your company page uh you're going to get more reach from your personal profile all right 
All right. Well, well that's it for the Q and A. So before we talk a little bit about the the course that we built and toiled over for so long, uh, yeah. what are, what are we scheming up for our next webinar event, Jeff? And actually, I'll grab one of my boots. So uh, this is um, the Ambitious Photographer's Journal, which is uh, available on um, it's available on Amazon. You just type in the Ambitious Photographer's Journal. It's in three formats. It's in hardback, it's in uh, color paperback, and in black and white paperback. The reason being is it wouldn't LinkedIn wouldn't produce a color paperback in Australia, and uh, it's oh, well. um, step by step guide to setting out your goals it's got loads and loads of examples in and then it's 52 weeks and it's not it's not date uh, specific so um you can start setting your goals and achieve more in your business from tomorrow you don't have to wait till the first of january so what we're going to talk about in our next webinar we're going to talk about goal setting consistency time management and collaboration because it's taking these little steps it's identifying um, stuff in your business that is going to really catapult your business forward and give you the maximum effect. And it's these little steps, these little small steps that you take that produce the huge results. And one big thing I've, I've noticed from my clients all over the world is, you know, when you have that consistency and you keep doing these little things that might only take you 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, it, it compounds and the results get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's about identifying these and then setting up what we call a habit routine to make sure you actually do it. Because it's so easy to get lost working in your business instead of working on it. Yes, yeah. you've got to work in your business and, and do the shoots and edit your pictures. But there is way, you know, you can start to outsource more stuff because what you want to be doing, you want to be concentrating on, concentrating on doing more shoots, but also marketing your business to get those additional shoots in. Yeah. And then another thing you want to do is create that premium brand because people people will pay more for something if they perceive it has a high value. So branding is so important. That's up there at the top of the things to do on your goals um, and, and creating that, you know, that, that business is going to give you a lot more money. So you're making more money for less shoots because people will buy more if they believe in something more. It's called yeah. perceived value. And that's how, you know, um, brands like some Mercedes, BMW, Tiffany's, that's how people will pay more for their, you know, even Val Florent, you know, people will pay more for, uh, you know, this T-shirt probably costs about three times the price of a T-shirt from TK Maxx or, or Walmart or somewhere like that. It's not necessarily any better quality but i perceive it has mm. a better quality because i believe in the brand and it's brand that allows us to charge more if you don't have a premium brand if you look cheap no matter how good your photography is people aren't going to have that perceived value in it because they're not photographers they can't see the difference but what yeah. we can all see and what we all recognize because we're, we're bombarded by consumerism is a premium brand so it's essential that we get our premium brand up there then market ourselves doing the things consistently, just these things for like, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour a day maximum on a consistent basis, four or five times a week, that is going to snowball and it's going to compound and it's going to catapult your business forward. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll do a, an hour long webinar. I think we, I think we decided on the 24th for that, right? So yeah. Yeah, so we'll, that'll be on the 24th, same time, 6 p.m. U.S. Pacific, um, right here. You'll get an invite, folks. Um, if you're on this webinar, you'll get an invite for that webinar as well as the replay for this one. So, Jeff, let's let's wrap it up and uh, talk a little bit about that course that we, we put together. I'm going to screen share it so folks can see it. And tell us why we put it together and what it's, what it's all about and what you kind of packed into that thing. So... With this, I've taken it right from the very basics because I know uh, a lot of people on, you know, there, there, be, there might be a lot of people on uh, on this this live here who who already have a LinkedIn profile and think the LinkedIn profile is okay, but it potentially might not be. It potentially could be written about you, not about your ideal client. So what this course does is it starts you right at the very beginning um, to create a client-facing 
profile that tells the benefits of what you do. So it helps you niche right down, identify your ideal clients, then create headlines, banners, about sections, feature sections that really, really sell the benefit. Then once your profile is 100% optimized, we then go into filling out your company pages, creating your LinkedIn company pages, because what we want, we don't want, we don't want you to just be another photographer on LinkedIn. We want you to be the go-to photographer on LinkedIn. So yeah. once we've got your company pages and your profile done, the next thing we do is create a content plan and we tell you what to post, how to post, when to post it, and how to engage on it for the maximum results. And then go through creating um, a content plan to make it easy for you to follow. So basically, everything you need to know about LinkedIn from start to finish to, to get you, uh, and, and this is without spending any money on premium. So all this can be achieved with a, a free LinkedIn profile. You don't have to have a, a premium LinkedIn profile, and you certainly don't want to be paying for LinkedIn ads. I would say, please do not waste a penny on LinkedIn ads because they're very, very expensive. Cynthia wants to know if you're a newbie, uh, is it st is the course still helpful? Totally, totally. Because at the end of I think each each section that we did four, didn't we? Then we did a bonus one at the end, which was five. Um, so I think we did about five recordings, each one an hour. So it takes you from a complete newbie, not even known, um, having anything on your profile at all, not even the profile picture. It takes you right from the very beginning to by the time you finish that course, you will have all the knowledge that a LinkedIn influencer has. Uh, right. And a lot of this content, I did a LinkedIn influencer program myself. I paid £6,000. So what, probably about eight nine thousand dollars to do a linkedin influencer program myself um about 18 months ago so a lot of the stuff that i paid and and uh, and and you know has helped me grow my profile i'm sharing with you this is great so here here's the course so the way this breaks down is on the left there you see jeff's course is 97 dollars one time it's not a subscription um you get the course and all the demo files or all the basically everything that goes along with that and then uh, we're offering, what do we say? 20% off, right? With a coupon. Yeah. So with, with the coupon code, Jeff, 2022, that'll knock 20% off. So basically I'll knock that 97 down to 67, right? So, um, so go ahead and check that out. The other cool thing about this is the, this course is part of the, this week in photo community, which means if you become a member of the community, that's that next box over here to the right then you get access to the course uh, and all the other courses in the library, as well as the membership on This Week in Photo and access to our events and get togethers and critiques and all that cool stuff. That's that 240 um, once a year and then the lifetime membership, which is that one time payment. And then you get everything, all the courses forever. Um, and anything new that we release, you get that forever as well. So that code, once again, is Jeff, J-E-F-F-2022. -F and I put the link in the, um, in the chat there to the course if you want to get it. And I'll also send that out. I'll, I'll send the link and the discount code out in the email with the replay. So in case you missed it, you'll get it there. And then, of course, at some time, probably mid to late next week, you'll get the invite. Once I get the, the new event that Jeff and I are putting together, I'll get that posted and get that out to you guys. And hopefully we'll see all of you back here again for round two of all this crazy LinkedIn marketing. Well, that one will be business building, but it's still, you know, it's still all related. All right, so we'll leave it right there. Jeff, any uh, any final thoughts you wanna share yeah, with if, the audience? If anybody, if anybody does wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free, just head over to uh, LinkedIn, drop me a connection request. Uh, if you have any questions, message me. I always respond to messages, normally by voice clip because it's easier for me, uh, it's quicker. And if you want to check me out on Facebook, it's just Jeff Brown, the photographer's mentor. Feel free to send me a, send me a friend request on Facebook too. So I'm putting a link to the, uh, the community uh, membership page in here too, so you guys can see what that's all about. Uh, there you go. Okay, go type fast. All right, that's at join.thisweekinphoto.com and you'll see all the cool stuff. All right, Jeff Brown, thank you. This has been fantastic. fantastic. Um, 20 past three, 20 past three in the morning now. Uh, whatever, it's time to get <laughs> up now. Take, go make, I'm going to take the dog for a walk. 
<laughs> yeah, go have breakfast, go for a walk, whatever. You're good. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jeff. I, I really appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, for attending this webinar. Um, I hope, you know, I, I my brain exploded working with Jeff on that course. And this webinar was kind of like, you know, a cherry from that giant cake that he goes through and that it's multiple modules and all that stuff. I feel like I need to go through it again. So I've, I've gone through it, obviously, when he was building it, I went through it once again solo. I feel like I need to go through it again because each time I go through it, I get something new out of it. So thanks again and uh, have a good evening, everyone. Good, well, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever. And <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks again, guys. See you now. This is Twitter.